Hello and welcome to five more GCSE Maths Calculator skills that you need to know. I'm going to be completing this on a Casio Classwiz FX85 GTX calculator, but it's still going to be relevant for you if you have its predecessor, the FX85 or 83 GT Plus. If you've got one of those, these are going to be totally relevant to you as well. And also if you have this version of Classwiz's big brother, the Casio FX991EX, these are going to be relevant to you as well, and maybe some other models of Calculator 2. So let's get started with the first of the five. The first of the five is looking at using the polar coordinates feature when you have an opposite and an adjacent side. Let's take a look at the question. Work out the size of angle X. We have a right angle triangle, angle X, and we have an opposite side of three centimeters and an adjacent side of seven centimeters. If we press shift and then poll, which is the add button, and then what we want to do in here is to insert the, well, first of all, the adjacent side, which is seven, and then we want a comma, shift and right bracket, and then the opposite side, three, and we're going to close brackets here, press equals, and if we navigate right, we've got theta here, this is angle X, 23.198 and so on degrees. And incidentally, if we navigate left, this R here, this is actually the length of the hypotenuse. So if we needed to find that as well, it's the length of the hypotenuse, 7.62 to two decimal places. Just be careful of the language here. In this particular question, it said, work out the size of angle X. Well, we have worked it out, so it's perfectly fair to use that. If it uses language such as show that or use trigonometry to find, well then you need to be using trigonometry, so involving tangent of the angle in this particular case. The second of the two more GCSE maths calculator skills that you need to know is using the related function, which is the rectangular coordinates function, when we have a hypotenuse and an angle. So this is pretty much exactly the opposite of what we've just done. So in this case, we have a right angle triangle with a hypotenuse of 15, and we have an angle there of 23 degrees. So we're gonna use the rectangular coordinate function, that's shift and subtract, which gives us rectangular. And what we're going to do here is we're gonna input the hypotenuse first, which is 15, shift, comma, and then the angle of 23 degrees. Press equals. And we actually get two results here. The first result, which says X there, that is the adjacent side. So in this case, it happens to correspond with the horizontal, but not always, so just be careful. But it's always gonna be the adjacent side to the angle that we have. So the length that we have CB is 13.8. And then Y, that's the opposite side, which is the side that we're looking for. Calculate the length of AB, 5.86, so it's 5.86 two, three significant figures. Again, just checking the language, it said calculate the length of AB. That's what we've done, so it's perfectly fine to use this. If it says show that or use trigonometry, then you need to be thinking of another way to be able to answer that. So in this case, using sine. The third of the GCSE Maths Calculator skills that you need to know is how to use the reciprocal button. So we've got a question here, find the value of the reciprocal of 1.6, give your answer as a decimal. So input 1.6 and the reciprocal button is here, x to the power of minus one. Press that and press equals. Here we have the reciprocal, it's five eighths as a fraction, SD, and then we've got that as a decimal, 0.625. Nice, simple, and straightforward. The fourth of the skills that you need to know is to use a table function to generate a table to help you to draw a graph. Let's take a look at the question. Draw the graph of y equals 0.8 to the power of x for values of x from 0 to 6. So we've got a table set up for us there that we can complete, but we can actually do this table on the calculator and find a set of points that we can plot to draw our graph. If we go to table mode from the menu, it will prompt us to input our fx. So in this case, a function of x, which is y, is 0 0.8 to the power of x so i'm just doing alpha and right bracket because that's what it will be on the fx 83 and 85 models if you have the fx 991ex there is a dedicated x button that you can use press equals if you're prompted for g of x uh, this is on the class models we haven't got a g of x so just press equals 
We need to input start, end, and step. If you're on an earlier model, these will be just separate, so you'll just have start to start with. So we're gonna start with the lowest value of x, which is zero, and then it will prompt for end. So our end is going to be six, values from naught to six. The step is how much it's going up each time. It's going up one each time, so we're gonna keep that step as one. Press equals. And here we have a table of results, 1, 0 0.8, 0 0.64, and so on. We can fill in our table on the question there and then use those points to then go on and plot the graph. The fifth and final GCSE maths calculator skill that you need to know is how to use the statistics mode to find the mean of a frequency distribution. Let's take a look at the question. Here is some information about 20 trains leaving a station. We've got 12 trains between 0 and 5 minutes late. We've got 7 trains between 5 and 10 minutes late. And we've got 1 train that's between 10 and 15 minutes late. No trains that are greater than or equal to 15 minutes. We've got to work out an estimate of the mean number of minutes late. Okay, so into the menu or into mode. And then you want to choose two statistics. Then one for one variable or one var. Now, if you don't have a frequency column set up ready to go on this, we're going to need one. So it's shift and set up, find statistics or stats, and then we want to press one for on, turn the frequency on, go back, and we've got a frequency table ready that is going to represent the number of trains. Now, because we have a groups or classes here, we're going to input the midpoints of these groups. So 0 to 5, midpoint is 2.5. 5 to 10, midpoint is 7.5. 10 to 15, midpoint is 12.5. The fourth group is a little bit confusing on this one. We don't have a midpoint, but then we don't have any trains. So actually, we don't need to include that as part of our table. So we'll just leave that there. Let's navigate back up to the top of the frequency table and fill in our frequencies. So 12, 7, and 1. Okay, I'm going to show you two different ways that you can get the mean. If you have a ClassWiz model, the easiest way is to press Option and then three for one variable calc, and you can see the mean is right here at the top. Our estimate of the mean is going to be 4.75. Another way you can get the mean is from the table or from the screen, you can press AC, and then you can press Option. If you're using a previous model, it's going to be Shift and one for the stat menu. And then on the ClassWiz, you need to navigate down to variable, on the previous model, it's four for var, and then you're looking for x bar, which is one in this case, one equals, it should present an x bar there that's going to represent the mean. Just press equals, and that will show your mean for you, so 4.75. So there we go, five more GCSE mass calculus skills you now know. Don't forget to subscribe for future videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time on The Calculator Guide.